We'll be looking out for that. All right. So my name is Juan Fernandez from De Película Puerto Rico. Hello, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about the new season of Only Murders in the Building. I will be directing questions individually so we can sort of make uh, the virtual situation work. So, Mr. Martin, something that has, you know, become even funnier in this season is sort of like a, uh, your character's acting ability. You know, uh, it's, it's a regular punchline on the show. So I wanted to ask you, what has been the best note that you have gotten on your performance as, uh, as Charles, uh, either this season or not? Something that's actually been actually useful and not scathing or traumatic. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we pretty much have our characters in place, but I guess uh, the best advice I ever got was from Marty uh, after I finished the scene. He said, don't worry, we can cut it. That's a good one, actually. That's kind of like we'll fix it in post, which doesn't always work, but you know. Yeah. All right, so Mr. Mark, Mr. Short, yeah. uh, let me ask you this. You're, Oliver's kind of on fire on this one, uh, you, you know, from the success of, of, of the podcast. So, yeah. uh, But he does have an episode where he's thrown for a loop. I don't want to spoil it. So let me ask you this. Um, uh, because you're a storyteller, do you think you're a better observer at people's tell? And did you build in tells? in Oliver while you've been playing him when he has a tell? You know, um, actually that we do, um, which affects other uh, episodes, but um, absolutely. It had to be, and that's interesting, you know, because you don't want to make it too like, <clears throat> you know, doing that thing. <laughs> so it has to be a subtle kind of thing that uh, people would pick up on. All right, thank you for so that. That's not my, you know, operative expression. Well, you know, there are a couple of things in, in, in certain episodes, but, I'm, but I don't want to spoil it for people because it's actually yeah, one of the surprises yeah, yeah. of we'll the season. Spoil it, come on. All right, there you go. So, uh, Ms. Gomez, let me ask you this. I, one of the funniest things, I just couldn't stop laughing because it happens to me all the time as you see the gray in my beard, is sort of when you sort of hit upon the generation gap where you don't think you're the old person in the group and then suddenly you realize there is a gap. So there was an adult <laughs> gathering in one of the scenes and then uh you know mabel sort of finds out that she actually could be with the adults so has that happened to you already uh, at all where you find like okay no definitely moved on from another generation and there's a gap already oh no i think there there to me i've learned that the generational gap doesn't necessarily really affect anything um just there's a few things i don't understand um <laughs> but i think in general i feel I feel great. I feel equal to Steve and Marty. Obviously, they're wise and they know more, and I can be a sponge and absorb as much as. Oh, I remember when Selena said to me, What do you mean we fought Germany twice? You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe, I, but maybe I didn't explain myself. Actually, I, I was uh, more I'm asking you if you've been in a situation where you realize that now you're one of the older ones and they're younger people, oh, you don't yeah. understand what they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, at this point in my industry, I could be old enough to play Timothy Chalamet's grandmother, you know, so. Uh, let's let's hope that too. Not really. Pretty 30, but, yeah. uh, but it's no, I don't. I'd like to see that, though. <laughs> that's a that's a pitch and a half right there, actually. I call we'll it see Granny in the phone. You <laughs> bet <laughs> your grandmother. All right. So, so the other thing, uh, Mr. Martin, it's kind of like in this season, you know, the sort of the tone of it, it's it's enhanced because it goes truly goes from whimsical to melancholy in, in certain episodes, which has been there before, but the sort of melancholy sort of rises to the surface. Has this has that been interesting to put that? That allowed you to do a spin on the characters. Oh, absolutely. In, in fact, the first season, the melancholy uh, episode, scenes came very early in the show, kind of right. explaining who the character was at this dark, you know. But now they're kind of interwoven, more, more subtly uh, presented. Uh, so you don't have a big scene of giant melancholy. We have some, you know, with my, my uh, stepdaughter, I guess. And, uh, but I, you know, it's so great to balance the comedy with something semi-serious because it gets you away from the comedy and then lets you come back to the comedy rather than have it be um, constant. Yeah, Charles. but I mean, the Bonnie, the, the Bonnie episode, it's a real, you know, that, that's a, a, it's a standout throughout the, the, the season. It really is. When you say, uh, when you say bonding? With the, bon the Bonnie, the day in the life of Bonnie, that episode where we sort of get to see the, what Oh, happens. Bunny, Bunny, yeah. yeah oh, bunny. Bunny, bunny. Okay, yeah, right, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, but anyway, all the all the characters develop, and you guys do a great job. They just wrapped me. Thank you so much for your time. And stay healthy where you are. Okay, thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you.